On the 20th of Dhul Hijj, in the 35th year of Hijri, during the month of Hajj, Dhul Hijj, Sayyidina Uthman ibn Affan, Sayyidina Uthman, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, was martyred, he was killed. Sayyidina Uthman is a companion which I feel isn't often spoken about. Many talks and discussions take place about Sayyidina Abu Bakr, Sayyidina Umar, Sayyidina Ali, radiallahu anhum. But Sayyidina Uthman themselves is someone who wasn't or isn't spoken about as much. They are spoken about, but not as much. Sina Uthman radiallahu an, he was born six years after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was born. Nabi alayhi salatu was salam was born in Amul Fil, the year of the elephants. Allah talks about this in Al Quran Al Kareem in Surah Al Fil. Alam tara kayfa fa'ala rabbuka bi ashabil fil. This is the year of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's birth. So 576 after Domini. Sin Uthman was from the Banu Umayyah tribe. Sin Uthman was Bani Umayyah. He never drank alcohol, he never committed adultery during the days of Jahiliyyah, Ayyamul Jahiliyyah. Sina Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu married the daughter of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallama, Sayyida Ruqayya. Just before A'lan al before Nabi Salatu Salam announced they are a Prophet of Allah Almighty, they informed those around them that Allah Almighty has granted them prophethood and they made this announcement, I'lan al Just before then, Sayyidina Uthman was married to Sayyida Ruqayya radiallahu anha. And then Nabi alayhi salatu salam announced the prophethood and Sayyidina Uthman radiallahu an who was aged 34 years at the time, 34 years old, he accepted Islam. It is said that he was the second free male, second freed male. Sayyidina Ali was the first child. Sayyidina Khadija was the first woman. Sina Abu Bakr radiallahu an was the first freed man, free man. Sina Zayd bin Haritha was the first slave. Yani he was in slavery or he was uh, a servant of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nabi alayhi salatu salam took him as the adopted son, etc, etc. Sina Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu he was the first to accept Islam after Sina Abu Bakr, Sina Ali, and Sina Zaid bin Haritha, radiallahu anhum. Ibn Ishaq said he was the second male to accept Islam. And how did he accept Islam? Sina Abu Bakr as Siddiq, radiallahu an, extended the invitation of Islam to him, invited him to Islam. And he accepted. What's the link between Sin Abu Bakr and Sin Uthman radiallahu anhuma? They are not from the same tribe. They're not tribesmen. But they are both very wealthy businessmen. They would trade together. They would do business with each other. 
And Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu an, who was the first man to accept Islam, extended the invitation and said, become a Muslim. Accept and proclaim the worship of one Allah and that Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and his messenger. So Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu an invited Sayyidina Uthman and he accepted. And then Sayyidina Uthman radiallahu an he practiced Islam and he was the leader of two migrations to Abyssinia, Ethiopia, East Africa. When practicing Islam became very difficult for the Muslims in Mecca Mukarrama, they, on the instruction of Rasulullah wasalam, migrated to Ethiopia. Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam and the companions, some of them remained in Makkah Mukarramah. But Sayyidina Uthman, he took a group of around 12 in one narration and a bigger group the second time round to Ethiopia. Why Abyssinia, Ethiopia? Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam was told that in that part of the world, in Africa there, there was a Christian king called Najashi. And he was very accommodating. Sayyidina Uthman radiallahu an went and he sought political asylum. Sayyidina Uthman, they left from Makkah Mukarrama and sought political asylum, safety in Ethiopia in Habash, in Abyssinia. And they went there. The Quraysh had heard, the Meccans had heard that Sina Uthman has took a group there. They sent two ambassadors to represent them. Then there was a big munazara, big argument, debate that took place in front of the Christian king. And Sina Uthman radiallahu an, who was with Sina Ja'far bin Abi Talib, Sina Ja'far al-Tayyar, he spoke to the king Najashi and said that we are followers of the religion of Islam, we are believers in the Quran, we are believers in Sina Rasulullah and Allah Almighty has mentioned this about Sayyidina Maryam, this about Sayyidina Isa and the Mushrikeen of Mecca who were there at the time said don't let them stay here. We have good relations with you. We do business with you. Return them back to us. And when the miracles of Sayyidina Isa were mentioned, Najashi stood in front of Sayyidina Ja'far radiallahu an. He drew a line in the ground and he said, this is the difference between me and you, just this line here. I grant you freedom to stay in my kingdom as long as you wish. So Sina Uthman remained there with his wife and some of the companions. Then they returned and then they went back a second time. So Sina Uthman radiallahu an, he was part of this migration. He was the leader of the two migrations to Abyssinia. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Shi'bi Abi Talib, they remained three years in the valley of Abu Talib, there was a boycott, social boycott against the Muslims. For three years, they were persecuted in this manner. And then we know at Aqaba, before the migration, two occasions at the place of Aqaba, every year, people from Yathrib, Medina Munawwara, they came in secret, they accepted Islam and they returned back to Medina Sharif. And then later they invited Rasulullah to do the hijrah, migration. Thirteen years spent like this. In this we see also that the Messenger of Allah visited the heavens. Yani al-Isra wal maraj took place. The migration occurred. Sina Uthman and also migrated with his family. In the second year of Hijri, the Battle of Badr took place in the second year of Hijri, 
the battle of Badr took place. Sayyidina Uthman wasn't present in on the plains of Badr on the day of Badr. Why? Because he was taking care of Nabi Ali Salatu Salam's daughter, his wife, Sayyidina Ruqayya, who was severely ill and passed away in those days. So Nabi Ali Salatu Salam on the day of Badr took a spear and they planted it into the ground and they said, this spear represents Usman radiallahu an. Usman is present here on the day of Badr with me and this spear is in place of Sayyidina Uthman. That I know that he is taking care of my daughter. Therefore, there is absolutely no qualms, no issues, no regards thus far or in any way, shape or form. Sayyidina Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu then married Nabi Ali Salat Salam's other daughter, Sayyida Umm Kulthum. Sayyidina Uthman married Sayyida Umm Kulthum. She passed away in the ninth year of Hijri. Nabi Ali Salat Salam said, No Prophet of Allah Almighty married two of his daughters. No Nabi of Allah, no Rasul of Allah Almighty married two of his daughters to the same person other than. Rasulullah alayhi salatu salam marrying two of his daughters to Sayyidina Uthman. And he was then referred as Sayyidina Uthman, the Nurain. Sayyidina Uthman, the possessor of two Nurs. He married the two Nurs of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Hence why he was referred to as Sayyidina Uthman, the Nurain radiallahu anhu. So Sayyidina Uthman had this honor, this sharaf. He had this virtue that no other Sahabi had. That he married Sayyidina Ali radiallahu married Sayyidina Fatima to Zahra. Salamullahi alayha. No doubt. The martabha maqam, unquestionable. Sayyidina Uthman radiallahu and not married just one but two daughters. Nabi alayhi salatu salam married two of their daughters to Sayyidina Uthman. This tells you the maqam of Sayyidina Uthman. From the al khulafa al rashidun the four companions, the four caliphs. Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq married their daughter to Nabi alayhi salatu salam, Sayyidina Aisha radiallahu anha. Sayyidina Umar married their daughter to Rasulullah alayhi salatu salam, Sayyidina Hafsa. They are the father-in-laws. Sayyidina Uthman married two of Nabi alayhi salatu salam's daughters, Sayyidina Umm Kulthum and Sayyidina Ruqayya. And Sayyidina Ali was married to Sayyidina Fatima to Zahra, these two companions are the two son-in-laws. Look at this rishta, look at this relation, look at this family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Two khalifas, they are father-in-laws. And two khalifas, they are son-in-laws. The two elder khalifas, they are known as the sheikhain. They are the two grand sheikhs of the ummah. Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu. And Sayyidina Uthman and Sayyidina Ali, they were the two son-in-laws of Rasulullah alayhi salatu salam, that Nabi alayhi salatu salam married their own daughters to them. Radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in. And we, in the 21st century, sit here and debate about their maqam. We argue who is greater and who is greater. Who has more virtues and who has more virtues. We stick to the consensus, we stick to the ijma. We stick to what the ulama and the scholars in the last 1400 years have taught us. We don't deter from this. We remain with the mainstream, with the jama'ah, with the majority. Sayyidina Abu Bakr, awwal, wathani, Sayyidina Umar, wathali, Sayyidina Uthman, wa rabi Sayyidina Ali, radiyallahu anhum ajma'in. These are the great companions of Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sayyidina Uthman radiallahu an, he was one of the companions who during his lifetime, whilst Nabi alayhi salatu salam were alive, received the glad tidings of going to Jannah. Abu Bakr fil Jannah, Umar fil Jannah, Uthman fil Jannah, Ali fil Jannah. Nabi alayhi salatu salam in front of the Sahaba told them, you are the people of paradise. 
Sina Uthman radiallahu an was one of the five companions when Nabi alayhi salatu salam left this world. Nabi alayhi salatu salam said, I am pleased with him. I am radi with him. Sina Uthman was a hafiz of the Quran. He memorized the entire Quran. And one of the biggest services Sayyidina Uthman did to this ummah and that he will get the ajar of Al-Quran Al-Kareem he will get this ajar on the day of Qiyamah Jam'u Al-Quran this is Al-Quran Al-Kareem the Quran in book form begins with Surah Al-Fatiha ends with Surah Al-Nas there are 30 Jews there are 114 chapters there are over 6,300 verses of the Quran this is Al-Quran Al-Kareem, Kitabullah. This is the book of Allah Almighty. When Nabi Alayhi Salatu Salam left this world, this Quran, Al-Quran Al-Kareem was not in a book form. Verses of the Quran, chapters of the Quran were scattered. Some Sahaba had some, some others had some. Sayyidina Abu Bakr As-Siddiq instructed four companions to begin Jam'ul Qur'an, gathering the Qur'an, after the battle of Yamama. 300 hafiz of the Qur'an were martyred in this battle. And Sina Umar radiallahu anhu was a visionary. Sina Umar, he was a man who looked ahead, in, ahead of his time. Sina Umar was a visionary. Sina Umar said to Sina Abu Bakr, who was Khalifa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Khalifa ummah the chief of the Ummah, the Amir of the Ummah, Amir al muminin Sina Abu Bakr, gather four of the greatest companions who are scholars of the Quran, Sina Zaid bin Sabit and others, gather them and please put the Quran into a book form. For if more Hufas of the Quran die, then what will be remain? They have memorized in their hearts but we, for those who haven't memorized, they need to refer back. Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu an, one of the great Sahaba of the Quran. Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu an, one of the great companions of the Quran. Sayyidina Ali bin Abi Talib, Hafiz of the Quran, one of the most learned in the Quran. Others like Sayyidina Zayd radiallahu an, these, Sayyidina Salim, they all got together and they began the process. It is said, during the Caliphate of Sayyidina Uthman, after a few decades, the Quran was compiled and put into a book form in this tartib and this order. From Surah Al-Fatiha to Surah Al-Baqarah to Surah Al-Imran to Surah Al-Nisa to Surah Al-Ma'idah and like this, every surah in which way, shape, form, where, how the tartib, the order of the Quran, this is known as the Al-Mushaf Al-Uthmani. This is the, the copy of Sayyidina Uthman. This copy then was printed. In that time there was no printing presses etc. But the Quran was then duplicated as in it was copied. So it was written by hand. And then one copy was sent to every part of the Muslim world. And then it was again repeated by those who are masters of khat, writing of the Quran. They continue to do this. Until today we find that all around the world, the copy that Sayyidina Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu authorized, this has spread from this time all the way to Sayyidina Uthman's time till now, until Yawm al-Qiyamah, every person who opens the Qur'an and reads the Qur'an, Sayyidina Uthman radiallahu anhu will get the ajr. This is why they say, what is one of the best forms of sadaqa jariyah? What is one of the best ways to give sadaqa jariyah on behalf of your deceased or your own sadaqa jariyah? Invest into books, religious books, deen books. Buy co copies of the Quran and give them for free. I give you this Quran as a gift in the name of my father. Every time you read the Quran, my father will get the ajr. And everyone reads the Quran. Some read more than others. Others may not read at all. But we have some parts of the Quran in memory in our minds. Surah Al-Fatiha, everyone knows. Surah Al-Ikhlas, everyone knows. Surah Al-Falak, Surah Al-Nas, everyone knows. Ayatul Kursi, everyone should know. 
ayatan fi akhir surah al-baqarah the two verses at the end of surah al-baqarah we all know yani the quran that said uthman radiyallahu it's all the same quran it's not that the quran is different but there was difference of opinion مثلا one example said abdullah bin mas'ud in his copy of the quran that he had from his knowledge that he was told surah al-falak and surah an-nas is one surah he considers surah al-falak and surah an-nas kul a'udhu bi rabbil falak min sharri ma khalaq wa min sharri ghasikin idha waqab wa min sharri an-nafasati fi al-uqad wa min sharri hasidin idha hasad kul a'udhu bi rabbil nas malikin nas ilahin nas min sharri al-waswas al-khannas alladhi yuwaswas fi sudur an-nas min al-jinnati wan-nas this is one one surah not two little difference he considered to be one surah of the quran so when you looked at his copy and version not that there are different versions he accepts there are surah al-falak surah an-nas he doesn't dispute that he says that this is one why when nabi alayhi salatu wassalam did ta'awuz ruqya with these verses of the quran they recited them as one so that's just one example of the subtle differences between the companions when it came to the quran they're not major many of the ulama consider and the sahaba considered bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim to be part of every surah of the quran except surah at-tawbah this is another opinion imam shafi rahmatullah alayhi he considers it to be what part of surah al-fatiha that you must recite bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim with surah al-fatiha and on that note i'll let you all aware because being the imam of this masjid being someone who found this masjid etc after years of uh, the last few years i've been thinking for a number of time with regards to this decision i've made taken that i have been studying the shafi'i school and for a while i've been studying and i don't know my love for sayyidina imam shafi'i radiyallahu anhu has grown he is one of the schools of the ahl sunnati wal jamaa though all my life for the first 33 years i have been a student and a follower of sayyidina abu hanifa radiyallahu anhu i've decided that i'm going to become a student of the shafi'i school and follow the shafi'i school meaning that certain things within the prayers you will see will be slightly different and you'll say hey ka ho jata you know i will do raf'ul yadain are you going to say hey what is he doing i will read surah al fatiha and say amin out loud in the hanafi school you don't say amin out loud in the shafi'i school you say amin out loud in the hanafi school you don't do raf'ul yadain in the shafi'i school you do raf'ul yadain so after long time thinking and studying and discussing even with my teachers sheikh yusuf and sheikh abdul karim i've decided because of lifestyle convenience and many other reasons hence why the schools were made that i am a student of the shafi'i school and will be following and practicing the shafi'i law and methodology in my daily life so i want to make that aware to my community aware especially to the congregation here so that they are not confused if they hear me say amin out loud okay, you know this is jahiliya don't get offended by the word i'm going to use ke jara banda rafa ya dain karna ya amina hana wo bhabi hai no this is jahiliya la hawla wala quwwata illa billah if those people who follow the ahl hadith school and they are not followers muqallid to any imam that's their opinion i am a muqallid i am taqli i do taqlid of said abu hanifa i was doing and now said imam shafi i follow this school i am a student i am bound to the teachings of this school not to say i disregard any other teachings but we should get this misconception out of our heads sidna imam shafi'i they they do raf'ul yadain they are from the ahl sunnah he is known as the mujaddid of al qarn al thani he is the mujaddid of the second uh, uh, century imam shafi rahmatullah alayhi was one of the greatest imams to set foot on this ummah He is one of the greatest imams in the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Half is of the Quran at the age of 7. Half is of the Muwatta Imam Malik at the age of 10. At the age of 
Muslim Zanji radiyallahu anhu rahmatullahi alayhi, the mufti of Makkah said, if I'm not here, you will give fatwa at the age of 15. This is Imam Shafi'i's maqam. He lived for 54 years. He influenced Sayyiduna Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal. And he took from Imam Abu Hanifa student Sayyidina Muhammad ibn Hassan al-Shaybani. And he was a student of Imam Malik ibn Anas radiyallahu anhu. Yani Imam Shafi'i took the best of the Hanafi school and the Maliki school. And because he reached such a high maqam and status himself, he developed his own school called the Shafi'i school, which later was followed by hundreds of ulama. Imam Nawawi was Shafi'i. Imam Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani was Shafi'i. Imam Jalaluddin al-Suyuti was Shafi'i. My mashaykh and teachers, they are Shafi'i. So it's not uh, something ajeeb. You shouldn't think, oh, cow, yeah, no, please. Don't have this in your mind. It's a personal decision. For years I've been uh, studying the Hanafi school and the last couple of years I've just had this burning love and desire to join and become a student of the Shafi'i school. May Allah Almighty give us all tawfiq. Allah accept all our prayers. May Allah Almighty give us khair in this dunya and the akhirah. Sayyidina Uthman passed away on the 20th of Dhul Hijj. Today is the 18th. 20th of Dhul Hijj in the 35th year of Hijri. And he is one of the great companions of Rasulullah his house was surrounded, he was under house arrest. And he was stabbed in his back. And the Mus'haf that he was reciting from, till today it is preserved with the blood of Sayyidina Uthman on it. And where did the blood fall on? The ayah of the Quran where Allah said, فَسَيَكْفِكُمُ Allah Almighty is enough for you. To tell us, for every one of us, Allah is sufficient for every one of us. Allah is kafi for us. We don't need to go here, there, and everywhere else. May Allah Jalla wa'ala give us khair in this dunya and the akhirah. Wa aqul qawli hadha, astaghfirullah li wa lakum, wa akhru da'waya anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Allah, 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 la ilaha illallah jud'alayhi.